Anastasia Gorbs. Today I would like to show you a Pilates reformer workout, or at least part of it, that will use some of the release techniques that I like to use with a lot of my students. So a lot of times when, um, you know, I get started with my Pilates workout, or when I have students who come in, there's a lot of tightness that's going on in the hips, with the hamstrings, usually upper back and things like that. So it kind of gets a little bit harder to engage and really focus on some of the Pilates exercises. So in order to help the clients um, and myself as well warm up a little bit faster, I like to use little release balls for my warm up. So I'll be using um, a set of sphere balls. They, like I like this set because it comes with four different balls. So I'm going to get started by using the little spiky balls. They're about two inches in diameter. And the spikes are kind of um, medium, hard, soft. They're, they're not like all the way hard, but um, they have kind of like a little bit of a give to them. So I'm going to get started with the footwork. Um, I'm going to be on three springs. But obviously you can adjust that to how you like it. So I'm going to lower it down. So the first part, I'm going to place the balls right under my hips. So there are a lot of areas that can hold this tension. So we're going to work through different parts without actually focusing on particular muscles. So there is a lot going on with our gluteus minimus, gluteus minimus, um, the, ma the maximus. So all those muscles can be involved. We can talk a little bit about our piriformis. But for right now, just place the balls right under the rim of your pelvis over here on the both sides of the sacrum. I'm going to start with our footwork in parallel position, hip width distance apart, and on our heel. So go ahead and press it out from here and come in. So the balls are small enough so that we can feel those spikes pressing into our tissue. So press it out, come in out and control the carriage on the way in press it out two more out come in out go ahead and go to the middle of your foot wrap your toes over the foot bar keep your arch lifted so you're pressing a little bit more through the outside edge of the foot press out work on keeping your hips nice and even in this position so you can keep checking your box here. Take your fingertips, your thumb, and your middle finger. Place them on your lower ribs and your hip bone over here. And just keep checking this distance. Does it change as you move? Does it shorten? Does it feel longer on one side than the other? Keep figuring it out. Working on your alignment. At the same time, keep that pressure going into the ball so you can start you're getting this release. Go into your toes. Press it out from here. On this one, you can really feel deep pressure coming into the balls. And press it out. Come in. Press it out. Come in. Reach out long through the front of your head. Neck is long. Spine is lengthening. Tailbone is reaching in the opposite direction from your head. And two, and one, press it up, lower the heels, lift the heels, lower, lift, and four, and three, and two, last one, lift it up, come in, we're going for, to Pilates V, staying on your toes first, but go ahead and move the balls out to the sides a little bit, change the position. Wiggle yourself a little bit to kind of find the good spot there. Press it out, squeeze through the inner thighs, come in. And press it out, squeeze, come in. Press it out. And four. Let's do it fast. Three. Two. One more. Come in, going straight to the heels from here. So keep your feet nice and flat, press it out for eight, seven, again, squeeze the inner thighs, five, four, 
three, two, and one. Come on in from kind of the middle of your foot. The balls are still kind of out to the sides. You can readjust them a little bit if you want to and start shifting the weight, the weight of your body side to side. Side and side. So you're finding the deeper pressure every time. And now lift your feet off the foot bar. If you want, you can hold on to the shoulder blocks or keep the arms down. Whichever one feels better. I'm going to go a little bit to one side. You're going to let the hip lift off the carriage, leave the ball so all the pressure is coming into one side of the pelvis and come back, find the other ball, rock to the other side, press deeper here, come to the side and again, open up, press deeper, really feel the weight of your legs pulling into the hip joints, pressing into the carriage, into the ball. Come back, now go one more time to one side, and over here you're starting tiny little movements. So think about massaging yourself into the ball, tiny little circles, and then reverse. Two, one, switch the other direction, and massage it on this side. Keep your core tight throughout. And reverse. Come back center. You're going to roll up to change your springs. So I'm going to two springs on this one. Come back down. Feet front the foot bar again. This time, again, move the balls out, down. Your hips a little bit more down, your glutes. And Keep them a little bit more open. Single leg work. You're going to bring your right foot up. Knees stay in line. Press it out. Come in. On this one, you can really work and focus on where your hips are. If you feel that you have less pressure on the balls, then it means that that hip is lifting up. So work on that and you can start straightening out the left and bend. And out and in and out and in and two press it out last one stay here drop your left heel under the bar keep the knee nice and open now you can go out to the side come back i'm going to move the ball even a little bit more to the side go out so that the ball is pressing into the soft tissues not into the bone itself and out and out and two and one now go ahead and pull the carriage in stretch out the left you're gonna press out bend the knee bring it to the side nice deep big circles opening up the hip Again, massaging yourself into the ball. And let's reverse. So reach the leg out first, out to the side, pull it in. Reach the leg out, pull it in. Circle through the side, pull it in. Last one. And good, lower. Let's switch. So the left foot comes off the foot bar, press it out from here, come in, press it out, come in, three, two, keep focusing on the weight in your pelvis, and extend and bend, extend and bend, and four, three, two, Stay up, lower the right heel under the foot bar, bend the knee, let it go to the side, feel the pressure, and come in. Put more pressure into the ball, come in, and three, and two, and one, press the leg out, bring the carriage in, pull the knee in, open up. Come in, pull the knee in, open up, come 
in, two more, pull the knee in, open up, come in, last one, let's reverse, five, four, three, two, and one, good, lower yourself down, good job, we're going to take the balls out, move your hips around a little bit, feel the difference, you should feel a lot more release going on now, so we're going to take the balls and place them under our bra line or the tips of our shoulder blades, so come up and find this position, so the first time you go down, it's going to be kind of feel a little weird, so lower yourself down, make sure that the balls are on both sides of your spine, so right under the shoulder blades there. Go down, even yourself out. Good. Bring your feet back on the foot bar, arms are up towards the ceiling. Inhale, let the fingertips reach up towards the ceiling. Exhale, release the shoulder blades down, put more weight into the balls. Inhale, let the fingertips go up. Exhale, release. Letting those little spikes, think about Letting them come in between your ribs. Inhale, go up. Exhale, release. Go ahead and find your handles. Stand up. Bring your legs up into tabletop. Press the arms down. Come up. Focus on keeping that even pressure in the balls right now. You can tuck the tailbone under a little bit, lengthen your lower back in this position so you can apply more pressure onto the balls. Keep your core big, nice and tight. Bring the arms down, open up and circle. And down, open up and circle, keep lengthening through the crown of your head, and two, and one, let's reverse, open up, to the sides, use your back muscles, squeeze the arms in towards your hips, open up, from the back muscles, squeeze it in, come up, and three, and two, Last one. Good. Go ahead and lower, bring the handles back down. You're going to place your feet back onto the foot bar. Drop the headrest down. We're going to go up, finding deeper pressure into those balls. Lift up. Nice, long, tall bridge. And lower down. So you're lowering down. Focus on pressing into the balls. And come down, inhale at the bottom. On the exhale, bring the tailbone up straight, peeling yourself off, keeping more pressure to the balls. Keep that pressure. You don't want to separate yourself, but the hips are moving away. At the top, inhale, move your hips in towards your heels a little bit. Find more space in your waist. Start lowering down, finding again that pressure onto the balls. One more time, and exhale, go up, inhale the top, exhale, go down, we're going to stay on this light weight, on the exhale, one more time, go up, press the carriage out, come in, press the carriage out, come in, two more, press it out, come in, Last one, out, come in, lower down. Now bring your legs over the foot bar, roll up, lift up slightly. We're going to try to move the balls into our traps, so those really tender spikes. So we're going to place the balls over here, right on the edge of the shoulder blocks. And depending on the equipment that you're using, some, um, on some, it's kind of a little easier to get into this position. Some others, if the shoulder blocks are not wide, or it gets a little bit more difficult to find that on some of the balanced body equipment, it's a little bit harder to position the balls. So if it doesn't work out for your particular 
brand, it's fine, just, you know, you can skip this one, but if not, if you can make it work, it really feels good to uh, find those trigger points in your traps. Bring the arms down, and first, just press it out. Keep your heels on the foot bar, press it out, and you're already going to feel that pressure going into this standard spot. So press it out. So you can see the ball is kind of right over here in the crease, at the bottom of the crease of my mat. And it's a little bit under me. It's not all the way, not like perpendicular, not completely horizontal. It's a little bit under me so I can get deeper into the pressure. Two more. Press it out and in. Press it out. Come in. Let's try to roll up. And on the exhale, start rolling up. And then press out. Roll down. Come in, roll up, press out. This is where you can really feel this pressure. Roll down, articulate your spine on the way down. Come in, one more this direction, roll up, press out, roll down. Come in, press away, out, roll up here, come in. Roll down, two more. Inhale, press out. Exhale, scoop the stomach up. Come in, roll down, keeping your hips even. And press out, that's your last one. Come up and roll down. Good. Take the balls out. Let's go ahead and change our position. So we're going to be going for our short box after this, but of course, if you want to. Stop and do a hundred and other sets. Feel free to do that. So now I would like to use our spare balls doing some of the short box exercises. So have all um, four different types that come in the set for the spare balls, but obviously you can use any other ones that you might have around the studio. Um, at first, we're gonna put our overhead springs on, put the foot bar down, and place the feet under the foot strap for our short box, short box abdominals. So I'm gonna use the little spiky balls one more time to help me with the round back. So I find that a lot of times people have trouble finding this nice curl and maintaining it throughout the exercise. So I'll put the curls under this little the crease, underneath the glute over here. And once the balls go there, it automatically forces you, you automatically want to pull the tailbone forward, to roll over. It's not comfortable, we can't really sit anatomically on these balls like this. The hip bone, everything kind of feels like really awkward, you won't be able to go back. So it forces you to push the tailbone between your legs. So bring your hands on your ribcage, round your back, create your capital C, Pull your abs in, think about zipping up really tight pair of pants. Keep reaching up with the crown if you have like somebody's trying to pull the head forward. Tailbone's reaching under, your lower back is lengthening, waist is long. Let's go back for our round back, round back. On the exhale, come up. Now you can even focus on engaging your glutes on this one. Go back. Exhale, pull the abs in stronger, come up, go back, pull it in, two more, go back, pull it in, last one, go back, pull it in, take the balls out, let's do a little more release for our for our lower back here. So still keep the balls right behind you. This way we can still keep working on our round back. So pull the tailbone forward and slide back on those balls. Pull the glutes under you so you already know what it feels like to engage to pull the tailbone forward. In this position, go down. If you're going down, you're gonna feel the deeper pressure onto the balls and come back. And again, go by keeping the same round position. And come up. And go back. And come up. 
two more. Go back. Exhale, come up. Inhale, go back. Let's hold it here. Good. Now think about releasing your glutes in this one. As we're still engaged, and just trawl side to side. Shifting your ribcage, rotating your ribcage. At the same time, you're going to feel the change of the pressure going into the balls. So you're really working on pushing those the pelvis, your muscle into the bones. You're rounding your lower back. Keep twisting at the rib cage, getting nice, deep, oblique work in this position. Lats can be pressing into the foot plate. Last one. Come up. Take the balls out. We're going to get ready for our climbing tree. So this is one of those moves that a lot of people have trouble with because they have tight hamstrings. So that, let's warm up those hamstrings. And then uh, you can use either one of the smooth balls or like little larger balls. The spiky balls will be a little um, too little for this one. So this one is about two and a half inches and this one is about four inches. So we're gonna, I'm gonna start with a, let's start with a big ball if you have one. So you're gonna place it under one hand. So you're gonna take that leg out of the strap, keep the other one in. You're gonna lift up, push the weight of your body forward and just kind of roll it out. Roll the top of your hamstring out on the ball. You can keep rotating the leg when you go out and when you come in. So if you have some inner thigh tightness over here, this internal rotation will really help you get in, massage those spots out. And the other side. And just notice if you find any of the spots that feel like particularly tight. And if I found one closer to the top, so the, on this one I'm going to take a smaller ball and I'm going to come closer to the edge of the box so you can put more pressure. I'm going to extend the leg out and push the weight of my body forward. So drop this leg down to the spring, extend it out, just kind of see where it feels good. And once you found that spot, just kind of hold it here. And maybe as a little micro movement, shift your hips side to side to really try to release that spot. Ooh. Tight one for me. Good. And maybe you can try to find another spot in your hamstring there. Try to move it out a little bit. Come up. One more little thing before we go anywhere. We're gonna go into our third fork. So on this one, go ahead and cross same leg over the thigh. You're gonna come up, push the weight of your body into your heels, now if, into your hand. Now if that just kind of feels really awkward, you can always go to a smaller ball and roll it out. Roll, roll, roll. You're rolling out one side of your pelvis. You start going into big circles. And then start making those circles smaller, smaller, get a little spiral, finding like the tightest spot that are there, the piriformis spot there that kind of our hip rotator, you can shift side to side, just kind of experiment with the different movements. And good. So let's take the ball up and check our climate position. So my hamstring feels a lot better at this point. So I'm going to slide a little bit more back. Flex the bottom leg. Stand the leg out a couple of times. Walk up towards my ankle. Lift up and start lowering. And go down. Climb back up, keeping the leg reaching up. And go back down. Um, up, just one more time on this side, go down, um, good, release the left down, let's do the same thing on the other side. So starting with a large ball, place it under another hamstring, under your thigh, and start rolling out, side to side, rotating with to an internal and external rotation, finding spots that 
need the most attention on you. Find a good spot. You can feel free to hold it there for just a second. I usually like to take at least 30 seconds to a minute for one side. So we're going to go down to a smaller ball right now. And you move closer to the edge. Stretch out the leg with the weight of your body forward and just hold it in this. Side is not as tight on me, so I'm gonna go um, for a large ball. I'm gonna carry forward, so cross the left, right ankle goes over the left knee, lift yourself up, and here we go. Circle it out and around on the ball, and hold. Take the ball out and let's try to find the tree on this side. Just find your position, even out square your hips. Then straighten up the left and back. Straighten and back. And good. Stretch out, walk up towards the ankle, rock back. Find your scoop, tailbone reaching forward, just like we did at the beginning. And start walking down. Come on, back up. And again, go down. Coming back up. Two more. Walk down the ladder. Walk up the ladder. Last one. Walk down. And come back up. Good. Take the box to the back. We're going to do our feet and straps, which is also wonderful with the ball. For feet and straps, I'm going to use the spiky balls again, bring my headrest up. I have two springs, go down. The balls will go again under the hips. Grab the straps, twist the carriage out. One foot. a good position for the balls where they're even so let's start again kind of on both sides of the sacrum press the legs out and let's go lower lift lift the legs up making sure that the knees stay straight and press them down and come up reaching long through your tailbone reaching long through the front of your head come up and go back down and up, and down, keep going, and up, engage your core so that your ribs are staying on the carriage, they are not coming up, you're pressing deeper into the spiky balls, and you're focusing on keeping the same length between your hips and your ribcage, so let again, to keep my fingertips on my, um, lower ribs and my pelvis to make sure that this space doesn't change, it doesn't move. I come up without collapsing. I lengthen more from my lower back. Go down, find the space, keep the core tight, no after popping up. Lift up and down. Really focusing not on the legs on this one, but on my core. And let's Push the legs out, push out, come in. Well, it feels good over there too with their balls, helping us release a little bit more. Come in, push out, come in, keep lengthening it through the crown of your head, come in. Bring the legs up towards the ceiling, open up the legs out a little bit, open up the legs wide, 
and pull them back in. So I'm going a little bit wider than I normally would to get into a little deeper stretch here. And just open and then start making those movements a little smaller, a little bit more controlled. And two, last one, find a little opening, go for the circles. Lower the legs down, open them up, and they'll come up, meet at the top, and down, open up, to the top, and down, open up, to the top. Keep pressing into the balls, and and down. So not losing that pressure on the ball, so that uh, the tailbone is not going up and down, we're keeping everything still. And let's reverse. And inhale, exhale, coming up. And inhale, exhale, on the way up. And three. And two. And one. Good. Go ahead and go for the frog. So come in, bend the knees. On this one, I want knees to stay in line with the hips, heels together. Press them out, squeeze, come in. Press them out and squeeze. Come in. Press them out. Thinking like you're pressing yourself away from the straps. Reaching out through the crown of your head as if your feet were stuck in cement and you're trying to lift up. Stretch away. Two. Last one. And good. And let's go for a nice hamstring stretch here. So with the balls here first, I'm going to actually let my lower back stretch out. So on this one, I will let my tailbone come up. So the balls give me a little bit of extra support here. Press down on the straps, feeling a good opening my lower back. I'm going to bend the knees to really stretch out, open up all those spaces. And press the legs out. This time I'm going to anchor my hips. Press them again into the balls. Flex the feet, press down on the straps. Find my deep hamstring stretch. So if I'm gonna flex my feet a lot, I'm gonna feel it really tight in the, uh, a lot of my calves. And if the calves are tight, that might overtake all the stretch in the hamstring. So if you feel that, just let go of the feet so much and just press, focus on bringing the legs in straight from the hip joint. But your tailbone is reaching down, your hips are pressing into those balls, so you're not losing that tension. And good, open up nice and wide. Keep pulling your legs in towards the shoulders, reaching out through the heels. And come back up. Slide your feet out of the straps. Take the balls out. We're going to sit up for the mermaid. So on this one, I want like to combine the mermaid with our calf stretch. So this is something for a calf uh, release. So take your one shin that's closer to the shoulder blocks, place it against the shoulder blocks. The other one comes in front of you. Now, I'm going to take the large ball. Again, if you have two different sizes, that's great. If not, you can still do it with the one size ball. Place it under my calf, kind of the middle here. Take the other ball on top. In this position, all I'm going to do is just roll it out, press my top ball and roll out all the spots, my calf, little tiny little circular movements, finding a little, those tight knots through the calves. Usually, again, most people have really tight calves because we don't really walk a lot, we stand a lot. Or even if we sit a lot, those calves are tight because they're just too weak. They're not getting enough um, attention from us. And we usually don't truly really stretch them out a lot. We don't think about them. And that can cause a lot of issues like plantar fasciitis, like different weird pains in our feet, um, shin splints, all the different sensations that a lot of times are kind of hard to explain. It can make our life really difficult. So that's why I like to really focus in on this area and just make sure just to explore
before you tap, just keep pressing through all the different spots. You know, you don't, don't have to be an anatomy specialist here, or anatomy buff to know exactly which muscle you're pressing. You hear you're just working through your body, you know, it's tough, so just kind of keep working. You're going to feel all the different parts and different spots that are a little tighter than the others. Okay, so this calf is feeling much better now. I'm going to place the balls down. I'm going to do my mermaid on one spring. Place the hand in front, in front of your shoulder. So you're pushing the carriage away and going up and over and lift. Now in the mermaid one thing that we like to focus on is keeping our hip down. Now if that's not an option for you, your hips are tight, it's not coming up, that not a place where you can use a ball. So I can take this little ball and place it under my hip here just to kind of build up that room so you have something to feel for when I'm working through this. So I'm, I'm going to place it here and then over time I can lower it down. But just place it where you can find that home for yourself, your, that ground, and start pressing your weight. And as you're pressing your weight, focus on keeping your hip in contact with that ball and come back up, not losing that pressure. And again, up and over, reaching up and up, stretching up, opening up the ribs at the top, pressing up, reaching through the arm overhead, bring yourself back one more time, and up and over, and good. Okay, so now we can do the same thing on the other side. I'm, I'm not going to turn around, I'm going to do my calf release facing this way, but obviously you can turn around, pivot to go to the other side. So let's do a large ball goes under the bottom of your calf, little ball goes on top, just start massaging it out, feeling all the different spots here again. And I would usually take about a minute for this, not really spending the whole class massaging this area, but it's a good thing to devote at least a little bit of attention to this and maybe spend a little bit more time releasing working through the snots when we have the time available, maybe at home or between the classes. So it's a good way for the students to, if they know that they have a particular tightness in the body, it's a good um, thing for students to warm up with while we're waiting while they're waiting for their session. So just work through some of those spots and you can actually twist the ball in some of this, kind of getting deeper into those knots. Okay, work it out. And this I'm gonna turn around to do my mermaid on the other side. I'm gonna grab my powerful ball with me. So you might be able to see it a little better on this side. Take the ball, place it under the hip, so I'm building up ground underneath my hip. Look at the arm in front of you, and then press it out, going up and over. Keep reaching your hips, touching the hips onto the ball, and come back up. And again, press it up, reach out, open up your Rips at the top and come up. Two more. And up and over. Inhale, float back up. It's really good here. And up and over. Come back up. Let's drop the ball down. And our three screens on. After all the work that we've done, let's finish with running. So bring your feet back on the footboard, press it out. We just worked out our calves, so let's go ahead and first start with a good stretch on each leg. And then run it out. Hips are staying even, core is engaged, finding again our lengths through our body.
and four, and three, and two, and one. Good, draw both heels down. One final calf stretch, and bend the knees. Come on. Well, thank you so much for watching this workout. I hope you picked up a couple of different ways that you can add practical release to your Pilates session without actually taking Pilates out of the session. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. Thank you.